Welcome to a little bit more of a review of solving quadratic equations. We went through many examples in class today, but this is just a further review in case you're still needing it. And remember, when we're solving quadratic equations, we're looking for the roots, the x-intercepts, the solutions, etc. So let's go through a quick few examples. Let's suppose that I have something like x squared plus 9x equals, let's say, negative 14. Right now, this isn't a quadratic equation, and the reason being is that negative 14 on the right-hand side. We must make sure that all quadratic equations are set equal to zero. So I bring negative 14 over to the other side, and it actually becomes plus 14. And we see that this is a simple trinomial. So that means we're looking for two numbers that will multiply to the last term and add to this middle term of 9. And that could be either 1 and 14 or 2 and 7. And that's quite easy to tell that 2 and 7 are my numbers. And because this is a simple trinomial, factored form x plus 2, x plus 7, and that must be equal to 0. So how do I actually solve to determine these roots now? Well, what we must do is take each bracket separately and set each bracket equal to 0. So we could have x plus 2 equals 0, or x plus 7 is equal to 0. Now we just solve each mini equation. In the first equation, if I was to solve that by bringing positive 2 over to the other side, the answer is negative 2. For the other equation, if we bring positive 7 over to the other side, it becomes negative 7, and there's your two solutions. What if we have a case where we might have something like 2x squared is equal to negative 5x. You will notice yet again, it is not a quadratic equation because it's not set equal to 0. We can set it equal to 0 by adding 5x on the left-hand side, and there we go. And again, we will see it's not factored. Easiest way to solve a quadratic equation is factored. This, not a trinomial, that's fine, but you'll notice that each term has an x in common. And dividing each term by the greatest common factor of x leaves you left over with 2x plus 5, which is equal to 0. And again, if we take x, that's one factor, you set it equal to 0. That's an easy equation to solve. There's not much else to it. Or you can take 2x plus 5, set that equal to 0. Let us solve for x. 2x will be on the left-hand side. Negative 5 comes to the other side of the equal sign. Divide both the left-hand side and the right-hand side by 2. So x is equal to negative 5 over 2. Not too bad. And let's look at an actual word problem, which will be similar to what I gave you for homework today a rectangle with those two dimensions, and an area of 1,150 centimeters squared. And we are asked to determine its dimension. Well, remember, area is equal to length times width. So what that means is 1,150 is equal to 3x plus 1, 2x minus 5. We must expand these brackets using FOILs to get 1,150 is equal, now remember, 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x. Inside terms 1 and 2x is plus 2x, and the last terms 1 multiplied with negative 5 is minus 5. So what we have is 1,150 is equal to 6x squared minus 13x minus 5. That's still not a quadratic equation. 
let's bring 1,150 over to the other side. That leaves zero on the left-hand side, and we are left with 6x squared minus 13x minus 1,155. This is now a complex trinomial. We're looking for the two numbers that multiply to a and c together and add to negative 13. And 6 by 1,155 multiplies to negative 6,930 and adds to negative 13. And that will take quite a bit of time. The answer in this case would be negative 90 and 77. So let's factor this. That would give us 6x squared minus 90x plus 77x minus 1,155. We see a greatest common factor here. 6x divide 6x squared because we're going to factor by grouping into 6 uh, by 6x and negative 90 by 6x we get x minus 15 plus common factor of 77 x minus 15 again so what are your two factors one can be x minus 15 the other is 6x add 77 and both of these must be set equal to zero similar to before. In the first equation we get x equals 15 and in the second equation we get 6x is equal to negative 77 so x is negative 77 over 6. And which one of those equations doesn't make sense? Well it doesn't make sense to have a negative width or negative length so this one we say is inadmissible we can't use that one. So x equals 15. Since we have one dimension is 3x plus 1, we can take that 15 and substitute it in to get a length of 46 centimeters. Your other dimension was 2x minus 5. So that would be 2 multiplied by 15 minus 5. So that's 25 centimeters. There are your dimensions of your rectangle.